can learn in the brain and how much you should know depend on your goals. This introduction is to the basic anatomy and is not meant to be comprehensive but it's more than enough to get you started. So here is a normal CT scan of the head. CT uh, brain are conventionally viewed from below as if you are looking up into the top of the head. This means that the right side of the brain is on the left side of the viewer and the anterior part of the head is at the top of the images. For example, at this particular side, this is the right side or the right cerebral hemisphere. This is the left side of the patient, this is the anterior aspect of the patient, and this is the posterior aspect. In the midline here, here is the phallus that separates the two cerebral hemisphere. So as we scroll down, the phallus cerebri is continuous with what is called tentorium, and it looks like a tent. Everything above the tentorium is supratentorial, and everything below the tentorium is considered infratentorial. Now we will have um, a general overview of the loops of the brain. For example, anterior here are the frontal loops on both sides. Posteriorly here is the parietal loops. These are the occipital loops in here, and these are the temporal loops. This is part of the frontal loops as, as well as the orbital uh, or above the orbital roof of the brain. The specific divisions between these loops is beyond the scope of this talk, but I do want to touch on a couple. These here are the sylvian fissures, and um, the sylvian fissures separate the, the temporal loop from the frontal and the parietal loops. For example, here on the coronal axis, we can identify the sylvian fissure as a slice which separates the temporal loops from the frontal loop anteriorly and posteriorly from the parietal loop which is separated from the temporal as we said we'll shift again to the axial slices further to that there is another sign which is the central uh, sulcus. We have to, we have many signs to identify the central sulcus, but I will just talk about a couple of these. So when we scroll up to the midline, we will find this surface sulci, and it's called pars marginalis. And when we scroll up, we will find the central sulcus goes into the pars marginalis. It looks like like a basket. So the central sulcus goes into this basket. So the central sulcus, why it's important? Because it separates the precentral gyrus, which is the motor control area from the postcentral gyrus behind it, which is the somatosensory area. Another sign is the omega sign. It is here and it um, it represents the hand motor knob area because the motor control of the hand is in this pump in here. So this is uh, just uh, a couple of signs that you can identify the central sulcus. So here's the sylvian fissure and the central sulcus. Central sulcus separates the frontal loop from the parietal loop and the sylvian fissure separates the temporal loops from the frontal and the parietal loops above it. The green mitre structure you need to know are as follow. Firstly, the green mitre is represented in the cortex and it is surround the surface of the brain. And as we can see here, the cortex or the green matter is slightly denser than the white matter. And this is, as we said, because of the myelin, which contain fat. And fat is slightly 
less dense than the gray matter which contains the cell body of the neurons. We have, so the gray matter is either on the cortex superficially or deeply in the deep aspect of the brain and we call it the deep gray, gray matter structures. For example here, this is the head of the codate. This is the body of the codate here. It's the slightly denser structure and here as well. This is the salamus on both sides. This is the globus pallidus and this is the putamen here. And we call this the basal ganglia, the codate, putamen and the globus pallidus. For regarding the white matter, there are a few white matter structures that you need to know. So in this particular same slice, we can identify here the internal capsule, which lies between the codate and the putamen. This is the anterior, anterior um, limb of the internal capsule. This is the genu of the internal capsule, and this is the posterior limb of the internal capsule. And this lateral hypotensive structure, the line, this linear aspect, which is lateral to the putamen or the basal ganglia, is called the external capsule. And this is the anterior limb of the internal capsule, genu, and the posterior limb of the internal capsule. When we scroll up above the ventricle, this is the central semi ovale, and this part is here of the white matter is the corona radiata. So, to sum up, the gray matter of the brain is divided into superficial and deep. The superficial gray matter is the cortex, which lines up all the cerebral hemispheres, and the deep white matter, which are the basal ganglia in the form of the codate, globus pallidus, and butamin, as well as both thalami. The in white matter structure that we need to stress at is the internal capsule, external capsule, corona, regetta, and the same, uh, central semi oval as we discussed. In the cerebellum, they are infratontorial structure here. So these are both cerebellar hemispheres, as we can see in here. So in the midline, this is the verms. When we scroll down, this is the cerebellar tonsils. And at this slice is normal. And the cerebellar, cerebellar tonsils are not meant to be crowded here around the brain stem at the left of the foramen magnum. So this is, uh, this is the normal view of the cerebellar tonsils. So in the middle is the cerebellar verms. Below are the cerebellar tonsils. And on both sides are the cerebellar hemispheres in here. Now we will come into the brain stem. So this is structure. It's the upper aspect of the brain stem and it's called midbrain. It looks like the Mickey Mouse, like these Mickey Mouse ears represent the cerebral peduncles, which connect, of course, the midbrain to the cerebral hemispheres. So when we scroll down, this is structures called the pawns. And it is uh, connected to the cerebellar hemisphere by middle cerebellar peduncles. So here is the, the midbrain, cerebral peduncles, and also the midbrain is connected to the cerebral hemisphere by the superior cerebellar Peduncle is connected to the superior aspect of the cerebellum by the superior cerebellar peduncle. The bones is connected to the cerebellar hemisphere by the middle cerebellar peduncles, and the medulla oblongata are also connected to the cerebellar hemisphere by inferior cerebellar peduncle. 
and this part is the medulla oblongata and at this level we can see the medullo spinal junction so this is the a superior aspect of the spinal cord which is which is connected to the medulla oblongata and the, the rest of the brain stem now we will come into the CSF spaces. So the CSF spaces are very um, high yield. First is the ventricular system. Most basically, these are the lateral ventricles. In the midline is the third ventricle in here. And the lateral ventricle is connected to the third ventricle by form of Monroe which is here in both sides and this is the third ventricle as we said which is continuous below with the cerebral aqueduct which is continuous below here with the fourth ventricle so in the midline the fourth ventricle is connected to the CSF space at the level of the foramen magnum by the foramen of Magnesi in the midline and foramen of Loschka in both sides. Any blockage at any level causes proximal hydrocephalus, proximal to the level of obstruction. For example, blockage to the cerebral aqueduct in here causes dilatation of the third and lateral ventricles on both sides. So the first part of the CSF spaces are the ventricles, as we discussed. The second part is the basal cisterns. And we can identify these, for example, at this level. So what is the basal cistern? They are CSF balls at the base of the, a, the brain. For example, here on front of the bones, this CSF space is called the prepontine cistern. Here is the pituitary, pituitary fossa, and the cella tersica. Above this level, we, we can find also another CSF space in here. And it is called supracellular cystein. It looks like a star, supracellular cystein. At the midbrain level, in here, we can see another CSF space in between the cerebral peduncle, and it is called interpeduncular cystein. In both sides, it's called ambient cistern at both sides of the midbrain and posteriorly we have the quadrigemina cistern so uh, what we have in the ventricular system we discuss it as we discuss it it is divided into two parts the ventricular systems and the basal cisterns now we will discuss the arterial structure we will start with the anterior, um, anterior circul circulation for now. So we, what we have here, we have the, uh, the internal uh, carotid artery, which goes up. We can depict it here on the base of the brain here. And we will scroll up this structure it goes into the skull and inside the internal carotid artery is divided into the middle cerebral artery and into the anterior cerebral artery in here so this is internal carotid which is divided into the middle cerebral here and the anterior cerebral arteries in here. This is on both sides. 
so uh, the middle cerebral artery is the site where you look at the dense MCA sign that we will discuss later when we look at the uh, CT head to look for signs of early stroke for example we can um, look into the 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 course of the MCA which is further the subdivided in the Sylvian fissures in here so these are different branches from the MCA anteriorly, anteriorly also we can follow the anterior cerebral arteries this is in both sides this is the right this is the left and here until it wins around the corpus callosum in here so these are the superficial branches of the anterior cerebral artery now we have here in the front of the spinal cord we have the two vertebral arteries which unite to form the basilar artery in here and the basilar artery is further subdivided into the, the posterior cerebral arteries so the posterior cerebral arteries gives off the posterior communicating in here to connect with the middle cerebral artery and in between the anterior cerebral artery we can find that here the anterior communicating and this form the circle of wells so the circle of wells is anterior communicating from both anterior cerebral arteries the m1 or the first segment of uh, the middle cerebral artery posterior communicating artery and the posterior cerebral arteries from behind this is the circle of wells so um for hyperdense sign for stroke along these vessels since the stroke the, the clot is hyperdense on ct this is how we can define the early sign of stroke when we have any impulse or thrombus within the vessel along this uh, arterial uh, cerebral uh, anatomy the blood drains more later from the brain parenchyma into the veins and eventually into the venous sinuses when we scroll superiorly we uh, we can find here the superior sagittal sinus this hyperdense structure because this is a ct with contrast so it appears here hyperdense on non contrast CT, it is uh, either dense or hypodense. When we scroll down, the superior sagittal sinus in here, which is separated down here into the transversal sinuses in both sides. Here is the transversal sinus in here. and become the sigmoid sinus eventually in this area so this is the sigmoid sinus so superior sagittal sinus which it, it divide into the transversal sinuses and then into the sigmoid sinus and eventually drains the sigmoid sinus drains into the internal jugular vein in here so this is the internal jugular vein So, uh, this is a quick overview of the CT neuroanatomy. So, we discuss the dura, the phallic cerebri, which is separates into the tentorium below. Anything above the tentorium is called supratentorial, and anything below the tentorium is infratentorial. We talked about the, uh, the cerebral loops, frontal, parietal, temporal loops and the occipital loops as well we also discussed a couple of signs to identify the cervian fissures as well as the central sulcus we talked about the CSF which is divided into the ventricular system and the basal cisterns we discussed these 
and we touched the the circulation uh, the arterial circulation as well as the venous sinuses as well 